Number 37, letter A. What is the gauge pressure in a 25 degrees Celsius car tire containing 3.6 moles of gas in a 30 liter volume? All right, so letter A, it sounds like an ideal gas law to me. All right, so we're gonna use PV, PV equals NRT. Why, how did I know to do that? Well, that's part of practice, right? But also, you, you're recognizing what you're given. You're given a mole value, a liter value, a temperature, and you're asked about pressure. How are those values related? You have to know the formulas, all right? And then that's where you then look at the formula and you say, well, okay, I'm given N, I'm given T, I'm given V. Oh, I can calculate P. That's it. I mean, that's all it is. No magic, all right? So we're asked to find the pressure. So let's just solve this for pressure. So we're gonna divide out the volume, NRT over V. Now, what's important here is that anytime you use the ideal gas law, the pressure here will be absolute pressure. If they don't mention what type of pressure they're talking about, just assume it's absolute pressure. But this time they're asking what, specifically, what is the gauge pressure? All right, so now we have to keep that in mind. All right, so the pressure we're gonna find here, when I plug in N is gonna be 3.6. 3.6 moles, okay. R then is 8.31 or 8.3. Uh, the temperature then is going to be, has to be in Kelvin, so take the 25 and add the 273 to it. All right, 273. Just following this formula on over here. And then simply divide that then by the volume. All right, now the volume here has to be in terms of, if I'm using 8.31, it's gotta be in terms of cubic meters. So simply take your liter value of 30 and divide it by 1,000. All right, so now we can find the pressure. So let's see. So this is gonna be 3.6 times 8.31 times then parenthesis 25 plus 273. It was 25, yep, okay, good. Then divide it by now, 30 divided by 1,000. And what do we get? We have a value here of about now 2.97, 2.97 times 10 raised to the five Pascal. Now remember, this is absolute pressure. Okay, what that means is that you gotta find gauge pressure. How do we do that? Well, all you need is a simple formula. You gotta remember this, that gauge pressure is equal to absolute pressure minus then 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. So all you gotta do is just plug it in. So gauge pressure will be equal to 2.97 times 10 to the fifth minus then 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. And the gauge pressure will then be equal to, let's take a look, minus 1.013 times 10 to the fifth. I'm using exact numbers, so don't be, uh, don't go crazy in case the numbers are slightly, slightly off. 1.96, 1.96 times 10 to the uh, fifth, Pascal. That's the gauge pressure. All right, just keep that in mind. So that takes care of letter A. Let's move this out of the way, and there we go. Letter B. What will its gauge pressure be if you add one liter of gas originally at atmospheric pressure and 25 degrees Celsius? Okay, assume the temperature returns to 25 degrees Celsius and the volume remains constant. Uh, well, it's at 25 degrees Celsius, so what's it returning? Okay, anyway. Um, so now in this particular question, we're assuming that the volume remains constant. In other words, pretend you have a, uh, a certain tank here, okay? And it, this tank has a certain gauge pressures we spoke about, right? The pressure inside of the tank, the absolute pressure would be the pressure inside the tank then plus the atmospheric pressure outside of the tank. And we know that this tank is gonna be 30, 30 liters about, all right? And there's already 3.6 moles of gas in here. Now, if this is a rigid tank, and they don't say it's a rigid tank, but they're saying that the volume remains constant. So they're basically telling me that it's like a rigid tank. Okay, if it's a rigid tank, that means the volume of this thing won't change, all right? So if I had to now think about, you know, I'm gonna be changing some conditions here. I'm thinking about then something like this. I'm thinking about PI VI over NI times TI equals PF VF over NF times TF. They're changing conditions. I'm starting with this, and then all of a sudden I'm gonna inject, right, some more gas into that. So let's see. Uh, what we know or what we don't know. We know that the volume is going to stay the same of the tank. The volume hasn't changed. The tank, right, is still, it's still, that's the same volume. So that cancels. We know the initial pressure. All right, we, we found that. Remember, it has to be the initial absolute pressure. Okay, so we know that. Do we know the initial moles? Yeah, they told us 3.6. 
Do we know the initial temperature? Sure, 25 degrees Celsius, so it's really 298 Kelvin. Um, do we know the final pressure? No, that's what we're after, so let's highlight it. Okay, so we need to find that. Do we know the final temperature? Well, yes, actually, it's the same as the initial temperature. They're both 25, so guess what I can do here? See you later. Do I know, then, the final moles? I do not. I do not, okay? But we can calculate that. So remember, this formula now works down to PI over NI is equal to PF over NF. That's the formula that this breaks down to. So in order for me to find the final pressure, I better know the final amount of moles in this container. And think about it. If I start injecting some gas into this container, don't I increase the number of moles of gas? Sure. You increase those particles right in the gas. So you're going to change this 3.6 to some other value. That's what we got to find first. So how do we do that? Well, take a look at how, what you're adding. It says, if you add one liter of gas originally at atmospheric pressure and this temperature. So, huh, let's take a, let's think about that. So if I'm talking about the volume, if I'm talking about the characteristics of the gas that we're adding, I can then use the uh, ideal gas law to describe it, right? The pressure of that gas that I'm adding times the volume of the gas I'm adding should equal the moles of the gas that I'm adding times this R constant times the temperature of the gas that I'm adding. So what I can actually do here is solve this thing for N. And if I solve it for N, it's simply PV over RT. And what this tells me is that this is basically the amount of moles of gas we're going to add. That's equal to the pressure of the gas we're adding, which they told us was atmospheric pressure, which is 1.013 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. What, how much, what's the volume of the gas we're adding? Oh, one liter. Remember, you need it in cubic meters, so just take one and divide it by 1,000. Then divide that now by the R constant of 8.31, and then multiply it by the temperature. What do they tell us? 25 degrees Celsius, but we need it in Kelvin, so we add the 273, so that becomes 298. Oh, my goodness, right? So here is the amount of moles of gas that we're adding. Okay, adding. So let's calculate it. So let's see what it comes out to be. So 1.013 times 10 to the fifth divided by 1,000 essentially, then take that whole thing and divide it by 8.31 times 298. And we get a value here then, the amount that we're gonna add is going to be 0 0.0409, okay? This is the amount that we're gonna add. Is this the final number of moles of gas in the container? No, 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 right? I know I didn't give you any time to answer. No, 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 no. But it's not the final moles. This is the amount that we're going to add to the container. This is the amount of moles, 3.6, that's already in the container. So how many moles will there be overall in the container? Oh, right, you probably say, oh, you're gonna just add it. That is right, you're just gonna add it. Okay, so now we actually know what this final mole value should be. Now we can solve this for the final pressure algebraically. So the final pressure should be equal to the initial pressure multiplied by the final moles divided by the initial moles and sub i. And now we can just plug in. So the final pressure here will be equal to that initial pressure, absolute pressure. Remember the 290, 2.97, 2.97 times 10 to the fifth. Multiply then by the uh, moles of gas. Finally, we had, remember, it's going to be the 3.6 that we had initial plus then the amount that we added of 0 .4, uh, 0.0409. Then all divided then by the uh, 3.6 right, that we had initial. So let's do that. So it's going to be 2.97 times 10. And I'm using not the exact value anymore, so your answer might be slightly off, but don't, you know, don't go nuts. 2.97 times 10. I would go nuts if I were you. I, that's how I was when I was like, it's not exactly right. That, 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 to the decimal, it's not right. Something's wrong. Don't worry about it. Forget about it. All right, so times 3.6 plus 10.0409. You realize the older you get, the more you're like, eh, who cares anymore? <laughs> Divide by 3.6. All right, and now finally, when we do that math, uh, I'm going to put it over here. PF, it's equal to now 3 basically 3.00 so, and also who cares about sig figs, 3.00 times 10 to the fifth, okay? And that will be in terms of Pascal. Now that is the absolute pressure. This is not the final answer yet, because they wanted, what will the gauge pressure be? All right, so we just have to simply now do the subtraction. So take that value and subtract out the atmospheric pressure of 1.013 uh, times 10 to the fifth, and we get about 1.99 now, right? 1.99 now. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. 
All right, so that will be then the answer now. And again, all I'm doing here, it's just so you know, I'm taking this value and I'm simply plugging in it for absolute pressure here to find then the gauge pressure. All right, so this became 1.99 times, it's still to the fifth, right? Yeah, times 10 to the fifth Pascal. That is the final answer in gauge pressure. Guys, thank you. Please subscribe, hit that like button, tell your friends. See you next time.